The Resistance Management School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Crop Life Canada. Now, Lauren, your team confirmed the presence of Group 14 herbicide resistant water hemp in Ontario this spring. Tell us about what you found. So every fall we go through and we do a herbicide resistance survey across the province. So we locate any field that we can find that has water hemp in it. We locate those fields through uh, agronomist contacts and just our own scouting. In the fall and in the spring, we germinate those seeds in the greenhouse and then test them for resistance to imazethapyr, atrazine, glyphosate, and lactofin, representing groups 2, 5, 9, and 14, respectively. This past spring, we did have a number of fields that ha showed resistance to all four of those groups, um, and that confirmed our resistance at four locations in Ontario. So Lauren, when it comes to managing water hemp, you say one of the most important things is identification for farmers to be able to identify the weed. How do you distinguish it from other competitive weeds? So water hemp is an amaranthus species closely related to red root and green pigweed. Uh, here we are at the Cotton Research Site and this is a population that is almost entirely water hemp. This is a natural population, we've never done anything to uh, really put more water hemp here, so this is really just what the farmer is dealing with. Uh, looking closely, the way to identify water hemp compared to the other pigweeds is that the stem and leaves are completely hairless. That's really the best cut and dry uh, thing to look for. The leaves are often a little narrower and a little shinier but it is very similar to red root pigweed and you're just gonna be looking at the stems for hairs as your key identifier. Tell us why farmers should be so concerned about growing resistance in water hemp. So water hemp now is resistant to four modes of action in the province of Ontario. Uh, this really narrows down our, the options that we have for controlling this weed um, in both corn and soybeans. Water hemp is a highly prolific seed producer, so even if you have one or two escapes in the field, they're still going to be producing upwards of 300,000 seeds per plant, making next year's problem that much uh, worse. And it also is a weed that emerges throughout the entire growing season. So it'll start emerging late April and it will emerge right up until the end of October, November, really until it gets too cold to emerge any longer. How challenging could it be to manage this weed, Lauren? I mean, what's the dispersal pattern? You know, is it spreading? So currently we only have it confirmed in four Ontario counties. That would be uh, Lambton, Chatham, Kent, Essex and in the southwest corner of Middlesex. Although even throughout this growing season we are having reports coming in almost every week uh, for new locations across the province and those pro locations will be tested this fall and this spring to confirm resistance there. Uh, as you can see there it is a weed that establishes very quickly and does cause a significant yield hit to farmers. Um, its primary dispersal mechanism is largely through equipment. Um, so if you are buying a new combine in from the States or are even just moving your own equipment and you know that it's been in a contaminated field, to just do your due diligence and make sure you're not bringing water hemp seed with you. So Lauren, uh, the big question is how do we control this weed in major field crops like corn and soybeans? Let's start with corn. What's your recommendation there? So with corn, we fortunately still have the group 27 herbicides, which are fairly efficacious on water hemp when used pre or post emergence. So any product with mesotrione or, or isoxaflutal in it is going to uh, provide fairly good control. Um, although it is important to remember that this is a weed that is resistant and it's a weed that develops resistance very quickly. So we do want to have multiple effective modes of action in the tank um, for multiple passes throughout the field. So with soybeans, the situation is a little bit more challenging. Now that we have group 14 resistance confirmed in the province, we are really limited to only one effective mode of action. So the cornerstone of water hemp management in soybean is gonna be your group 15 herbicides. So that's peroxisulfone, esmetolachlor, and dimethenamid P. Uh, regardless of whether it is corn or soybeans, the key message is that you're going to want, be wanting to mix multiple effective modes of action uh, on this weed throughout the growing season.